Welcome. Today we are going to study a chain rule and quotient rule combined. So we're going to begin uh, with this particular example that you see here. And the question is, uh, you know, you're trying to find h prime or the derivative of this function. And the question is, you know, what approach do we take? Do we use chain rule? Do we use quotient rule? And, and sometimes this can be confusing. So um, there are actually two ways you can approach this problem. One way is uh, if you look in item one, you'll see that what we've done is we've modified our function and instead of squaring the whole thing, we separated it so that we squared the numerator and then the denominator. If you modify it to look like that, which certainly you can do using algebra rules, uh, you can approach this as a quotient rule problem. So when you take the derivative, the numerator would be your f and denominator g, and then you would just use the, the normal quotient rule, which is gf prime minus fg prime over g squared to solve this problem. And once you uh, calculated your f prime and g prime, you'll find that you will have to use a chain rule to calculate those particular derivatives in order to solve it. Uh, personally, I think that the second method is your better option. It's simpler and more straightforward. Uh, and the calculations will be definitely simpler. So in step two, if you look, we don't modify the function. Uh, we keep it, you know, as it is originally, the whole thing squared. However, the way that we take the derivative, we are going to make a substitution for everything inside the parentheses, and we're going to call that u. And when you do that, the function looks like u squared instead of what you originally have. And taking the derivative of u squared, you can use chain rule to do that. Uh, I feel that that is the better option, so that is the option we are going to choose today. Okay, so we're using the second approach, and as I said, we're going to take everything in parentheses and replace it with u. So you can see on item one, I've identified what u is, and in item two, we rewrite the function. Very important, when you use chain rule and you are making a substitution using a u or some letter, always write it as it is with that letter first prior to taking the derivative. It'll be much more obvious what the approach is. So we've done that in step two. And in, then in step three, remember the chain rule has two parts. The first part, you would just take the derivative of u squared. Well, using power rule, that would be two times u. But because it's chain rule, you must multiply that by u prime. That's the way the chain rule works. At this point, uh, you're, you're well on your way to solving the problem. But what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to calculate or figure out what u and u prime are. We already know what u is. Uh, we've identified that in one. And we can simply substitute u with uh, what we have in terms of x. But we have to calculate u prime. In other words, the derivative of u. So that's the part that's going to be a little messier. Uh, but that's the idea here. So again, just to review. In item one, we replace u, uh, with our x uh, it values within the parentheses with u. In item two, we apply chain rule. In item three, we start our substitution process back because everything eventually does have to be in terms of x because that's what our function is in terms of. So we replace the u, as you can see in item three. And now, as I said before, we still need to calculate u prime. So how do we calculate u prime? Uh, again, u, if you look at u, and you can see that here um, in item 1, u ha is, is in the form of a quotient. So in order to calculate the derivative of u, we're going to use quotient rule. That's what we're going to have to do. So if you consider the numerator f and the denominator g, then in item two, you simply calculate f. Once you know what f and g are, you just calculate f prime and g prime. Well, the derivative of f is one, so f prime is one. The derivative of g 
is 2x, or g prime is 2x, using the basic power rule. So at this point, we have all we need to plug that into quotient rule. We have f, g, f prime, and g prime. So just to remind you what quotient rule looks like, we have that in item 3. And then in item 4, you just substitute for all those letters. You substitute for g, f prime, f, and, and uh, f prime, and so forth. And you can see we've done that in item 4. And then in item 5, you just use a little algebra to uh, simplify that numerator. And again, make sure you're clear on how to do that and, and understanding your algebra rules. <clears throat> if you noticed in item 5, we have pulled out a negative 1 in the numerator. And we just did that to, uh, it's always nice to have x squared in terms of x squared, not negative x squared. So we pulled that at negative 1 out. And now we know what u prime is. Well, if we know what u is, which we you can see in item 1, and we know what u prime is, which you can see in item 5, we're good to go. We can just plug that into the original derivative we had at the beginning. And that's what we're going to do here. We're putting it all together. So let's just start all over again. In item 1, this is our function. We're asked to find its derivative. In item 2, we replace our function uh, with, we substitute u, and now it becomes u squared. In item 3, to do chain rule and take that derivative, we wind up with 2u times u prime. In item 4, we replace u with what we know u to be, which you can see here. And then in item 5, we replace u prime, which we calculated on the prior slide. And then in item 6, we simplify. And the only thing we've done differently here is we combine the negative 1 in the numerator with the 2 and everything. And then in the denominator, we were able to combine x squared plus 4 with x squared plus 4 squared. And that gives you x squared plus 4 cubed. And we are done. And that's chain rule and quotient rule combined. Now go practice, practice, and practice some more.